Fedora 38 is just around the corner. And nowadays, this style of release name where you just increment a number on the end is basically as normal as it gets. The next release is going to be Fedora 39. The current release is Fedora 37. The release before that is Fedora 36. And it wouldn't be that crazy to guess the release after 39 is probably going to be Fedora 40. But this hasn't always been the case. Like many distributions, Ubuntu being the most well known for it, there was a time where Fedora named every single one of their releases, going all the way back to Fedora 1, Yarrow, then Fedora 7, Moonshine, Fedora 8, Werewolf, 15, Lovelock, 17, Beefy Miracle, 19, Schrodinger's Cat, and then the final named release, 20, Heisenberg, and all of the releases in between were also named as well. Now, just to be technically correct, in the very early days of Fedora, the names weren't actually release names like Ubuntu does where the names are being used in public marketing. Initially, they began as code names used internally to distinguish the individual versions, and then over the years, around the point where the names became part of public voting, then they're being used as release names. But if you go look at the Fedora documentation, nowadays they refer to all of them just as release names, so basically they've just retconned that part of the history. Now, when it comes to Ubuntu, their names have a very distinct naming pattern. Even if you know nothing about Ubuntu, it's pretty clear what they're doing. The first word and the second word start with the same letter. The first word is some sort of descriptor word, and the second word is going to be an animal. Now, sometimes those animals aren't real animals like werewolf, unicorn, things like that but they still go into the category of animal. Everything from Warty Warthog all the way up to Lunar Lobster and probably anything going into the future as well are all following exactly this naming scheme. But if you look at a list of Fedora names, it doesn't seem to be anywhere near as clear. How do you get from Yarrow to Tetnane to Heidelberg to Stentz to Bordeaux, Zod, Moonshine, Werewolf? It seems like they're just picking random names based on what, you know, the developers feel like the name should be. But they do follow a very simple rule. X is a Y and so is Z. X is the current name, Z is the future name, and then Y is what makes them similar. This will make a lot more sense with an example. So all the way back to the first release. Fedora is a thing with many uses, and so is Yarrow. Yarrow is a plant that's been used as a medicine, as beer flavoring, pest repellent, combating erosion, dyeing wool, and a ton of other things. And then for Fedora 2, Tetnang. Yarrow is a plant used in beer, and Tetnang is a producer of crops which are to be used in beer. Now, you're probably thinking, couldn't basically anything fit that first name? Why go with Yarrow over literally anything else? And for all I know, I couldn't find any explanation for it whatsoever, for all I know, the developers were getting drunk in Germany at the time, and they're like, hey, let's just name it Yarrow, because that's the thing that was used in beer at one point. And then it became Yarrow. I don't have an explanation for this. I don't think anybody does. So, even though all of the future names seem entirely random, all of them are following this very simple rule, and are very clearly doing so. Clearly, if you know that the rule actually existed, which didn't actually happen at the start. At the very start of Fedora's life, while the rule was being followed, the names weren't being voted on publicly, so there was no reason to make the rule public. All of these names were being selected by Red Hat employees. I don't know if they were having a vote internally or just some random person selected it, 
but it was being done internally within the company. And this makes sense. This is the way that most company projects are being named. Most of them don't have a public vote. But this did change around Fedora 7. At that point, they decided, you know what? Let's actually make the voting public and see what happens. Vote for the probable name of Fedora 7. They weren't sure if the public vote was going to be a good idea. They just wanted to test the waters and see how many people are interested, what names would be selected, and just see how it goes. The board has sent a list of suggested names for Fedora 7 to our legal department, and they have responded with the names that are past preliminary legal approval. Please vote for your favorite choice at admin.fedoraproject.org slash voting slash vote.cgi. The choices are Lee, Sherman, Nothing, Ceylon, Moonshine, and Siegfried. For this version, Moonshine ended up winning. And on this thread, someone asked, is there an explanation of the name somewhere? What they stand for, why they're being suggested, how they compare to the previous names? And the first response is the most Linux response of all time. It's nothing for you to worry about. And that's pretty much how it went for a uh, good couple of years. Up until Fedora 11, any discussion that was being had was being done on the Fedora mailing list. So if you weren't involved in the mailing list, you'd have absolutely no idea what names were even being considered. At this one, we had Cambridge, Farnsworth, Mississippi, Nile, Nitrate, Saltpeter, Terra, Water, and Whiskey Run. Along with some discussion being had on the Fedora issue tracker. And even back at this point, 14 years ago, when it was difficult to suggest a name, there were still really dumb suggestions, like Red Hat Linux, a release of Fedora called Red Hat Linux. This name um, got sent to legal along with all of these others, and uh, they all got rejected except for Water. I wonder why, especially this one. Maybe some of the others you could make some sense for, but why was this even here? But this is just the start. To the regular people using Fedora and most of the people voting on the names, they had no idea any rules even existed. All of this changed when Fedora 11's name came around, because this time it happened on the Fedora wiki. So this time, not only is the rule very clear for anybody out there in the public, but also they can very easily see every single name that is being suggested, and not only the suggested ones that are possibly going to make their way into voting, but all of the ones that are just rejected because they are bad names, because there is a copyright already using that name in the tech space, because there are people that literally don't have the ability to read the rules, but all manner of other reasons why they might have been rejected. Such as Eagle, only freedom. How does that fit the is a rule? It doesn't. It doesn't whatsoever. Longfellow, American educator and poet, famous resident of Cambridge MA. This one you could actually frame to fit the is a rule. They just didn't read and it just got rejected. Or another fun one where they just didn't know that Eclipse is software, so it just got rejected. So like, why would you even consider suggesting it? Fedora is not going to have a release called Eclipse. Actually, this one's a fun one. I kind of would have liked a release of Fedora called Urban <laughs> because of Urban Dictionary. But probably the biggest mistake they ever made is making it so the naming ability is public because this time they had so many more names to cycle through. Keep in mind, every single name had to be checked over by somebody. Even the really dumb suggestions somebody had to see. And the ones that were, you know, not completely ridiculous, the ones that got approved by the board, every single one of those 
had to be sent over to the legal department to go and find out whether they could actually use the name or whether it would break some other contract they have or something they're doing. And like with the old versions, once the names have been filtered down into the names that the board approves and legal approves, then the voting is going to be done in the exact same way it was done before. And this method was done all the way up to Fedora 20. And lovely for me, they didn't actually move the page around. So all you need to do to get to the next name page is just increment the number. So this is the page for Fedora 12, so on and so forth. And this kept going all the way up to Fedora 20. And over the years, they had to make it very, very clear how the naming is supposed to work because people refuse to read. General links automatically rejected. General links such as is a word or is a location, while technically within the scope of the rules, will most certainly be rejected by the Fedora board. Remember, the goal is to come up with a creative link for Schrodinger's cat. The following links will also likely be rejected. Names of living people or well-known trademarks. Please try to find a truly original and obscure link. They want to have the name be something fun. That's how they got things like Beefy Miracle. If it's just like Schrodinger's cat, Garfield is a cat. Like, that's not exciting. Now, funnily enough, even before Fedora decided to stop the naming, it seems like someone else was getting sick of it. For Fedora 20, someone suggested Fedora 20. Schrodinger's cat is a two-word name, and so is Fedora 20. Fails the is a test due to self-referencing. Look, that's technically correct, but, you know, they were getting rid of it in the next version anyway, so maybe it should just be expedited. Either way, at this point, they were still all in on the naming, but it made sense that eventually it would have to end. All the way back in 2008 with Fedora 9, problems were already showing themselves. This was an email sent by Jesse Keating. The ability to suggest names for the upcoming Fedora release is an honor we grant people who put up the traffic on the Fedora Devel list and participate in the ongoing development on Fedora. It used to be something exclusive to Red Hat employees, but over the years, we've opened it a bit more. However, it's not a free-for-all and it is a bonus for those that are doing a lot of work. If you want the ability to add suggestions, be on that list near the start of the development cycle when the call for suggestions goes out. Eventually, this changed and just entered the wiki. We take all the reasonable suggestions that follow the formula and run them through Red Hat's legal team, not a small cost. Define the names that would be acceptable should they be chosen. Then the vote is provided for a large set of folks. That's how it happens. This part right here is the most important part. As I said, these names have to go through Fedora Legal. This is a very expensive process. And as the naming kept going on over the years, the amount of names that were present and the amount of names that were just absolutely useless, absolutely ballooned. Was it this version that had God Armor? No, I think it was Fedora 19. There was one version where someone just included four or five different variations of God Armor and a bunch of other various names that didn't make any sense. So come the discussion for Fedora 21, something had to change this system was just not viable going forward. So this email was sent out. Release name process ended. The Fedora board is terminating release names as they are currently fashioned following Fedora 20. The community as a whole or working groups can propose any reformation of a release naming process going forward if release names are desired. 
Any proposed process will need to allow sufficient time for legal to review proposed names before they are chosen. This was discussed in the September 18th and September 26th board meetings and agreed to in the meeting on the 26th. The results are documented in the meeting minutes for those meetings and in board ticket 146 on Fedora Hosted. Now, it's a problem that it's on Fedora Hosted because Fedora Hosted is long dead and that page is um not archived on archive.org so I can't actually see the reason why they specifically chose to do so, but it seems like it's reasonable to say that it was just a giant waste of time and really expensive and just didn't make any sense to continue. The names, while being cool and while allowing for some fun marketing, doesn't really matter. People are going to be excited about Fedora 38 as much as they are for like Beefy Miracle or anything else that comes out. And technically, at least according to the Fedora documentation, Fedora 21 did actually have a name. That name being... Fedora 21. <laughs> you know? Eventually that person got what they wanted, not in the way they expected though. So then, I hope you learnt something today. If you're using Fedora, not using Fedora, I hope you learnt something about its history. And if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video, and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Sally, Bearer, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Hmm... I'd like a beefy miracle.